Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. For today's video, I want to discuss some of the results from my day one Vega coverage, as well as share a few opinions. So, two days ago now, I rushed out my Vega 56 coverage, having only received the card the day prior to the release, that is. So, it wasn't really ideal, but that's what we had to work with. Anyway, I was very excited to discover what Vega was all about, so I pulled my first all-nighter of the year and tested 25 games. The days prior to the release, or the days prior to receiving the Vega 56 sample, uh, I spent testing six other GPUs for the comparison, so we had fresh data for 25 games at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Overall, I found that Vega 56 was on par with the GeForce GTX 1070, MSI's custom-designed Gaming X model no less, and I'll touch on the reference versus custom card subject a bit later in the video. Getting back to the testing, there was one result that stood out like a sore thumb, and that was Dirt 4. Here, Vega 56 was an unexplainably 32% faster than the GTX 1070. Despite providing a full disclaimer and warning viewers that these results are massive outliers, and until they can be confirmed, I'll take them with a grain of salt. But yeah, despite that, a few viewers got very upset, called the benchmarks fake, and all that usual angry pitchfork stuff. Anyway, as all the reviews went live, I began combing the internet looking for other Dirt 4 Vega results. Eventually, I stumbled upon a hard OCP review from longtime tech veteran Kyle Bennett. Unfortunately, Kyle didn't test Vega 56, but he did compare Vega 64 alongside the GeForce GTX 1080 and 1070, so that's really going to tell me all I need to know. The problem, for me at least, was that Kyle's results were basically the complete opposite to what I was showing. Here Vega 64 was 10% slower than the GTX 1080. Quite different to the 32% gain Vega 56 had over the GTX 1070 in my video. My heart sank and I immediately thought, I've screwed up big time. I was also really confused and I couldn't work out what I might have done wrong as I spent over an hour confirming all the Dirt 4 results three times. Anyway, at this point it was 2am on Tuesday morning, just a few hours after the reviews went live, so I went to bed and had a bit of a think. I 100% trust in all the results the guys over at Hard OCP throw up, so I knew there had to be something more to it. The next day I woke up with the intention of looking into this further, and it was then that I noticed Kyle was testing with 8x MSAA enabled, an extremely aggressive anti-aliasing method. There's certainly nothing wrong with that, but I tested using CMAA, so could there be something in that? Conservative morphological anti-aliasing is positioned between FXAA and SMAA in terms of computation cost, so it's another high-performance alternative to traditional multi-sample anti-aliasing, otherwise known as MSAA. The technique was originally developed by Intel for use in Codemasters Grid 2 video game. The obvious thing to do here was retest all the graphics cards using 8x MSAA, and then for good measure disable anti-aliasing altogether. So let's start with the disabled AA results. Here we see Vega 56 is indeed much faster than the GTX 1070, 29% faster in fact. I also added the Founders Edition model which was 2% slower than the MSI Gaming X version with AA disabled. Anyway, it's quite clear that Vega 56 absolutely crushes the competition in Dirt 4 as it wastes the GTX 1080 and was even able to beat the 1080 Ti's 1% low result. Something else worth noting here though is that with AA disabled, the Fury X is also 5% faster than MSI's GTX 1070 Gaming X. Moving to the CMAA results shown a few days ago, we find similar margins. With anti-aliasing disabled or with CMAA enabled, again we do see much the same margins, though the Fury X now slips behind the GTX 1070. Now, time for the 8x MSAA results, and wow, things have changed quite a bit. Previously, using CMAA, Vega 56's 1% low result was 38% higher than that of the custom 1070. Now, though, it's 6% lower, though it's still 5% faster for the average, but that's a far cry from what we saw previously. It's been quite shocking to see how much of an impact these various AA modes can have on the margins. Whichever way you slice it, though, Vega 56 does well in Dirt 4. It just does incredibly well when using CMAA. Although I am yet to test with lower MSAA levels, it looks like Vega does do well at 2x and even 4x modes, based on some testing done by PC Games Hardware. They found using 4x MSAA that Vega 56 was 20% faster than the GTX 1070, so it seems like Vega really only loses its efficiency in this title when using 8x MSAA. 
Anyway, I just wanted to clarify the results shown in Mundo's video as they did look very out of place. That said, we know already that the RX 580 beats the GTX 1060 by a handy margin in Dirt 4, at least when using CMAA, so the results probably shouldn't have been that surprising. In fact, as I was wrapping this up, I did actually go back and have a look at my Dirt 4 release day results, and here I was using 4 times MSAA. And as you can see, the RX 580 is 20% faster than the GTX 1060, and not much slower than the GTX 1070. Moving on to another topic I would like to discuss. A few viewers claimed that my results were off and that I'd done something wrong, as Vega 56 is indeed faster than the GTX 1070, and every other review showed this. AMD themselves were also quite surprised with my findings and said Vega 56 should have won. Now, I'm not getting my nose out of joint over these comments, there actually weren't that many of them. And I did openly admit that my testing was rushed, though I am confident in the numbers, and I wouldn't have risked my reputation by publishing them if I wasn't. But looking around the net, there are certainly mixed results, and opinions, as there often are, so I thought it was worth looking into. Honestly though, looking at many of the big trusted tech sites, I felt like the results I was showing uh, were quite similar, at least the margins were anyway. And Nantech, for example, showed the same or at least very similar margins in the games that overlapped. They tested nine games, and of those nine games, I looked at six of them. The overlapping titles included Dawn of War 3, Total War Warhammer, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Battlefield 1, Doom, and Ghost Recon Wildlands. They also tested with Ashes of the Singularity, F1 2016, and Grand Theft Auto 5. Now, I dropped Ashes of the Singularity because it's a pretty rubbish GPU benchmark, at least in my opinion. I like it for CPU testing, but not so much for GPU testing. Plus, very few of you seem to actually play that game or are interested in it. Meanwhile, I dropped GTA 5, at least from that video, because it heavily favours the green team, and it's not really technically impressive anymore, especially from a GPU standpoint, unless you mod it, but... We're probably getting a bit carried away by that point. Admittedly, the game is still hugely popular, but it's also quite old, and I wanted to favour some more recently released titles such as Hellblade. Then we have F1 2016, and with limited time on my hands for testing, I dropped that game because it's a bit of a pain to get accurate results sometimes, due to a few issues with the game that require you to delete config files after every GPU or hardware change. Not a big deal, but I didn't have time to mess around with a game that might give inaccurate results. Anyway, and Nantech tested those nine titles, which is absolutely fine. However, their conclusion was quite different to mine. They found Vega 56 to be on average 8% faster than the GTX 1070, whereas I found it to be 2% faster. The reason for this being that they did only test nine games, and of those nine games, seven of them were very favourable to AMD. In fact, if you take my results from the six overlapping games and then add their figures for GTA 5, F1 2016, and Ash of the Singularity, so the games that I didn't test, we find the same 8% margin they reported, which is about as consistent as it gets. So if I tested the nine games they did, I would have also found Vega 56 to be 8% faster, and I probably would have walked away much more pleased with what I was seeing. Games such as Quake Champions, Mass Effect, Andromeda, Watch Dogs 2, Overwatch, Hellblade, Dishonored 2, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and Crisis 3, all going the way of the green team, I ended up with what I believe to be a more balanced test. Basically, NVIDIA won 11 titles, AMD won 12, while we saw a tie in just two titles. So you can see why results from one review to another can vary quite a bit. As another example, if Anantec dropped GTA 5, they would have found Vega 56 to be 11% faster, and now the margins are really starting to become quite significant. So this is why we test with so many games at Harbour Unboxed, and I do my best to include new popular titles such as Player Unknown's Battlegrounds when I can. Years ago I used to test with about a dozen titles, then I moved to about say 16 to 18, that sort of became the norm, and now I find myself usually testing with over 20 games to try and give you guys a more complete picture. Anyway, I don't mean to single out Anantec here, those guys do insanely awesome work and their numbers are always spot on, it just comes down to the spread of games tested. Now, while about 5 of the 1500 plus comments I received on my Vega 56 video claimed the results were wrong or fake because other reviewers showed better numbers, many more were upset that I tested using a custom GeForce GTX 1070. Ideally, I would have liked to test with a GTX 1070 Founders Edition as well as a custom board partner model such as the MSI GTX 1070 Gaming X, which I did use. 
However, due to limited time, and we are always managing how much time we have to invest in these videos, I could really only test one. So I went with the custom MSI GTX 1070 Gaming X for a few reasons. I'll try to explain those reasons as best I can, but I certainly don't expect to change the minds of those that disagree with my choice. And even then, I understand their point of view. Like I said, a compromise had to be made. Actually, before I get into it, I'm going to take Paul's explanation. Uh, I'm sure you guys know Paul from Paul's Hardware, but if you don't, check it out. Paul is one of my absolute favorite tech tubers. Now, Paul used the Galax GTX 1070 EXOC model, despite the fact that AMD would have much rather he used the Founders Edition. The reasons he didn't use the FE model, in his words, is because there are many more custom overclock GTX 1070s available on the market, and they offer better performance while sticking to the MSRP, and this is certainly true. He also noted the 1070 has been out for a year now, and that's also something I touched on. If the GTX 1070 was released a month or maybe even two months ago, then sure, I'd test the FE model because it would be somewhat relevant, especially if custom overclocked versions came in at a higher price. However, as it stands, the FE versions actually cost more than the custom board partner models, and for good measure, it's slightly slower while running much hotter and louder. Since day one, I have recommended, highly recommended, my viewers avoid the Founders Edition models like the plague, and the second I got my hands on the custom board partner cards, I stopped testing the FE models entirely, much to Nvidia's dismay. <laughs> Now, if AMD themselves agreed that the reference Vega 56 is limiting the GPU's performance, which they certainly haven't suggested, then why release the card in the first place? It's not exactly putting your best foot forward, is it? Rather, why not do what they did with the RX 580 and have the board partners take care of the card's design? Speaking of the board partners, I did talk with multiple different partners, and they all said that custom Vega cards are nowhere to be seen, and don't expect to have models anytime soon. Two different sources also believe that for now AMD is riding solo, so that's quite interesting. Whether or not this is true, I, I simply don't know, guys, but it does sound like it will be some time before we see the availability of custom designed Vega cards. And if that is true, that means those researching Vega performance right now, with the intention of buying in the next week or two, will likely be buying a reference Vega graphics card. In my opinion, it would be misleading to show that consumer GTX 1070 Founders Edition performance when in fact they would most certainly be buying a custom GTX 1070 board partner card if they weren't to buy Vega. Anyway, if custom Vega 56 models do come out in the next few weeks or months and they do offer 10% or maybe even more performance over the reference card, then of course I will retest all 25 games, possibly even more, and give you guys up-to-date consumer advice. For now, though, it just seems like common sense, at least to me, to compare products that consumers will actually be purchasing, and I'm going to leave it at that. You certainly don't have to agree with me, uh, but at least you now know the reason why I tested the way I did, whether you agree with that or not. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. There will be plenty more Vega testing coming up on the channel, and like what I did with Ryzen, I'll track Vega's progress closely as new drivers, games, and custom cards are released. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time, guys.